Okay, Lynn, we're with the, um, the head coach of uh, Toka Warriors. Last time I spoke to um, Terry, it was in March early. He was appointed the head coach of the, um, the team and um, the interview went very well. Thank you. That's, he was um, inactive in terms of practices and stuff and getting the team together. He was trying to get players in from the international scene and stuff. And um, Terry, maybe you can bring us up to speed on where you are as far as getting your troops together and, and what type of format you have now based yeah. on your comfort zone. Obviously with the COVID virus, it's been very difficult since my appointment on the 1st of January. Um, but we have done a great deal of work over What we've done is um, through uh, a couple of partners of mine, we've tracked down um, footballers with parentage across the world that are playing in good standards of football, big leagues, whether it be North America, MLS, ULS, or um, in the English or European leagues. We've got some fantastic talent out there. Um, what I found is it's been quite overwhelming because I put out on Facebook that I wanted these guys to step up and contact me if I didn't, hadn't been in touch with them already. Please step forward, let's see what you've got. And quite overwhelming. The responses have been amazing. I've, I've had over 500 people, players and family members around the world that have contacted me that are looking for trials. Of course, we're still locked down with COVID virus, so that's not possible at the moment, but um, we've taken on loads of video content, uh, CVs that we're thrashing through to see what indeed these kids have done over their career span. Um, and of course, you know, you, you, you look back over the recent years of Trinidad and Tobago on national team football, We've had quite an aging squad, so I made it very much a part of my initiative to go up to youngsters. And I'm talking 17, 18, 19 year olds that have got potential over a period of you know years to come through to the national side. Um, so, so is that is that where you're going to do? I see you have this proposed B team. Um, so based on, on on getting the younger, what's the size of your squad right now? Well, we you'll not believe this, but we started off, we are on Zoom, we had 88 players in training sessions. We cut that down to 63 on Zoom. Then when we got together, we had uh, our highest number physically training uh, was 41, which is still a great deal. We cut that down to uh, 35 initially and starting uh, yesterday, uh, we cut the squad down to 29, which was a significant cutback. And then we, as well as cut that down, we then reshaped into the A and B squads. So there are many. So is, that, yeah. is there a reason why you're reducing the squad? Um, is there any proposed, you have any potential games or anything? Is there a reason? Or would, would it have been best uh, to leave it? sizable so you have more people interested in this system and um what my reasoning behind this was uh, one uh, i've been pushing the normalization chairman uh robert to die to see if we can get a game against tobago in tobago which i think would be a great uh great for us because we're then seeing what Tobago have got too often we ignore the qualities that Tobago bring to the table so I wanted to take a squad of players over there, my best younger players, and ask the guys in Tobago, which I've already contacted and communicated with, to bring their best kids out so we can see. I've reduced the squad because I want to get into some serious work on principles of player, how I want to defend the ball, how I want to retain the ball, how, what I'm looking to do to create chances uh, and give us a, a, an opportunity. And by reducing the squad, it then makes it very competitive because I've already said to my players, it's not just about making this squad. Once I get to that squad, I will not stop having these kids in for trials, going back 
in the MIB squad at times to look at what we've got. So I'm always yeah. at the turn and then bringing the better quality to the table. So I'm, that for me is ensuring that over time, the quality of the squad is always increasing. I just thought the why base, keeping the interest based on the, the climate and the, the, the whole situation in Trinidad and Tobago, keeping most people positive was, would have been. But seeing that you have a, a, a contingency plan in the Tobago, and that Tobago situation sounds also really, really good. Correct. Because in talking to Burton Sinclair and some of these guys, Tobago always feel that this seem to be second best and neglected. So that's, that's really, really good. You mentioned the normalization. Um, what's, what's, uh, is how, is, how is that affecting your side of the shop? Well, it's, of course it is because everyone's waiting on the court case, which comes on uh, fortnight Wednesday, the 29th of July. Um, then we will find out who's actually leaving the ship, who's on board, who's not. Um, I've got to say, my staff have been fantastic. They've turned up for sessions as the, as the kids to train, regardless of being paid or, you know, we've rallied, we've brought food and drink uh, through Mr. Adad. He's done some really nice things behind the scenes to help us. Um, we'd actually, there's talk in Trinidad, pretty nice like the rest of the world and they're playing football over. You've got MLS, USL, all starting up. You've got Champions League uh, starts at the end of this month. Premier League is already back in full floor. All of them top uh, leagues in and around Europe where COVID virus is quite prominent. They're all back playing. And here we are in the Caribbean uh, where I would have to say government have handled the COVID virus very well, in my opinion. We've not had any um, spikes at all in the increase of, of, of COVID virus. So I want to get us out playing all over again. So the, 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 there is a potential um, Ascension Cup coming up, which I've suggested that maybe we could put in an under-23 national, under national team into that league. So we've got our international players that are not already signed up with football clubs um, competing. So it, it's for the benefit of the youngsters that we've got on. You've been um, projected or, or portrayed, I would consider it to be negatively, on, on, on a video that I got multiple reaching me. Um, as I mentioned to you before, one of the things I, I felt, felt that, that I should have done, a lot of people know going into that interview, that one of the things I was going to cover with you. And in and, and, and the interview that we had uh, in March, um, yeah. And I felt that that, um, that you put this situation with you and this altercation behind you. Um, we're just going to keep it towards the football. So what I want, in, in wishing you the best, I want, I really would like you to address that and, and in a way where it is history, but it's something, as far as I understand, you 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 never really address, and I don't think it should be something difficult for you to address, seeing that's in the past. Yeah. Well, in a nutshell, this is almost twenty years ago now. Um, but as you as you'll see from the um, the video footage that has been circulated, this is a a young man who's a, actually a very good player from Brazil. Uh, we played W Connection in a cup final. This is Jablete. Uh, seven or eight of the W Connection side were Brazilian, Colombian. Uh, my side was 100% Trinidadian. Um, Trinidad and Tobagonian because I want to do good things for the kids that are on the ground. Anyway, this guy scores a fantastic free kick on the opposite side of the field from the corner of the 18-yard box and curls it over the wall into the top corner. Brilliant goal. Absolutely outstanding. And I'm like I normally, I'm standing on the edge of my technical area. And for some reason, um, the player uh, doesn't run back to his own technical area to celebrate what is a fantastic goal. He runs directly at me. He covers 85 yards to get to me. 
and as is quite clear in the video, it's, uh, the, the, there is some verbals going on which wasn't very nice um, towards me. And when he arrived in my my technical area, I step I made one step forward and, and elbowed him, which I regret. I apologised about. I got a twelve match ban, a twenty four thousand dollar fine uh, for that at the time. It wasn't the right thing to do. Yeah, that's that's very unfortunate, and um, I knew the incident must have been addressed from a disciplinary point of view. Yeah. And and I'm finding it a bit strange. Things like that would be coming up. And because I interviewed you before, I just wanted you to address that. So I want to thank you for addressing that. What I would say is this. It was wrong what the guy did. And in retrospect, it was wrong what I did. But I put that behind me 20 years ago. People are still trying to bring it up now. And that really, Alderman, is because they're trying to take away from the mess that football is in today in Trinidad and Tobago. We've just gone through an administration of four years of failure whereby we've fallen out of the top 50. We've got 105th rank in the world. We've got no football at any level successful. Pro League is turning into a mess. Super League, not so clever either. National teams at every level are getting battered by other teams in the Caribbean region. We're not competing with Diana, Grenada, Barbados, Bermuda, giving us a run for our money these days. And 20 years ago, Alden, when I arrived there, they were teams within the Caribbean region that Trinidad and Tobago would batter. And that's because of the lack of management, leadership at the front in particular. Uh, we had the future is now under 15s uh, that couldn't win a game, conceded 30 goals over, I believe, six games, which was poor, poor, poor. And that's because of the, the lack of um, expertise, knowledge. You would recognise, Alderman, that football, football evolves all of the time. We've gone through, over my lifespan, I saw it as a very young kid, I saw England win the World Cup, changing their formation from 5-3-2 into a 4-4-2, winning the World Cup in 66. I then see, later on in my career, I see how Barcelona changed the whole style of football all over again. And win their leagues, European Cups, and Spain win the World Cup. I see top coaches like Jurgen Klopp and Pep Guardiola that are bringing these youngsters to the table that are in their teams and they're winning championships where whatever club they go to. So I'm seeing all of the changes and moves in football, but it's been very difficult to, to move past the power brokers that still want to hang on to their positions of power within Trinidad and Tobago football at the detriment of the youngsters that we've got on the ground. And that's absolutely well, I, I, in the face right now. Now that you have the football moving um in terms of uh the players and stuff you have got the situation going into the qualification for the gold cup qualifying for the qatar 2022 have you heard anything in, in, in terms of that no nothing's been confirmed as yet um covid virus is actually going to be a failure because a lot of these guys that are playing in these big leagues around the world that have got a parentage um some of them we've got to chase down and try and get passports for their parents first before we then can address the players themselves to get there. So the, the extra time that we've been allowed because of the virus has given me a chance to do that. Some of the players that in the past have been, um, past administrations have not been able to get these players on site. We are getting there. Um, I cut through a lot of the the bureaucracy red tape to and gone to people at the top so I can make these things work. Um, I need to do that all because again pro league spans for three to three and a half months and then it's done. So the kids have got eight, eight and a half months of the year with nothing to do, nowhere to play, no contracts, no income. Um, so it's quite difficult for them to maintain a good level of football 
and compete within our own region. So I've had to go very strongly on the outside international players that are competing in leagues that are eight, nine, ten months of the year um, at good standards. Um, you know, when, when you look at, um, we've got Jaden Sancho, potentially could have played for Trinidad and Tobago. We've never approached players like that because we think he's out of bounds. This is a guy now playing in Germany. Um, that Manchester United are going after. Uh, Barcelona have shown interest. PSG have shown interest. He's a 21, 22 year old young player from the Caribbean. Tells me that we've got some wonderful talent on the ground that some of them haven't been picked up, haven't been seen as yet. But the ones that have been like this, like Jaden Sancho, um, we've not gone after them hard enough. You know, these guys would have been superstars. The next Dwight York and Russell Lapkins of Trinidad and Tobago. That's what I need to be out there searching for. Okay, so um, based on that also, just one thing I think the public um, want to know. Uh, there's been an accusation also about you and uh, you don't have to go in depth with it because it would be a little remiss if I didn't um, what is the situation about you not having the experience? We know, I know you were a sex sales coach. I just couldn't cross that look, put any of their names behind any of the accusations that they've been. You're, you know, I've been in Trinidad 20 years now, so I recognize what I'm up against. As soon as they're able to put their name, sign a signature behind the accusations that are being made, then I will address them legally. Because look at the political side that we're in at the moment, politics coming off, it's getting nasty. TTFA politics has been nasty for the last while. The outgoing administration can't give up on things, they're still fighting it down. So they're throwing things out into the public domain without putting their names to it. It's all accusations, not based on anything factual. Soon as they've got, soon as they grow, put their name against something, then I will take them up on it. Otherwise, I'll just leave them as I have done for quite a period of time now, because I don't take them on because there is no fact, there's no knowledge, there's no nothing in behind some of the accusations that are being made. So I'm really, but it's, it's, I've got to concentrate on the kids, not of the not the politicians. Um, just for the public to understand, for my take on this is that um, if a guy get a coaching job, it means he qualified for the people that gave him the job. Based on a, a, a vetting process with Mr. Lepore and these guys, besides that political agenda happening away from you, to understand how all of a sudden that the focus is on you where the actual playing of the game is. And, and I think we should move on and you should continue with your practices. Absolutely. So I want, I want to thank you for giving me the time and um, wish you all the best. And I hope a lot of these youngsters get the exposure they deserve and that Trinidad and Tobago football could come back on the map. Thank you, me too. Fighting for it. All right, okay, thanks for the time. Thanks all. All right.